Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 and 2 class. Today we're going to be discussing integer operations. And before we start talking about these integer operations, we must realize that when numbers and or variables are being combined via addition or subtraction signs, okay, they're always really being added. Therefore, there are some rules which allow you to use the negative sign correctly. And we're going to talk about this concept, but basically, when you get 5 plus 7, you're adding 5 units plus 7 units. But if I have 5 minus 2, well, the answer is 3, but why is it? It's really 5 positive units plus 2 negative units. And then that would give you the answer of 3. But we're going to discuss all of this right now. Before I give you the rules, though, let's briefly and quickly go over absolute value. Please remember that absolute value is the distance from 0. Absolute value is always positive since it is a distance and is represented by the symbol given here, which I'm circling in red. So the absolute value very important for adding and subtracting integers. Again, it is the distance from 0. So what are these rules for adding and subtracting integers? Well, there's two basic rules. And the first one, okay, is when the signs are the same, simply add the given values and keep the same sign. So when the signs are the same, you add the numbers and keep the same sign. For example, 4 plus 7. 4 plus 7, the 4 is positive, the 7 is positive. So this is positive 11. You add and keep the sign. I've got negative 8 plus a negative 5. Well, 8 is negative. The 5 is negative. When the signs are the same, you add them and keep the same sign. So this would be negative 13. For C, I've got negative 2 minus 7. What this really means, remember what, what, I, what I started the uh, lecture with. Anytime you're combining integers or variables with plus or minus signs, you're really adding them. So what this is really saying is this is a negative 2 plus a negative 7. And when the signs are the same, you add and keep the signs, so this would be negative 9. Because 2 is negative and 7 is negative. When the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign. I've got positive 18 plus positive 19. Signs are the same. Add and keep the sign, positive 27. And I've got negative 6 minus 12. Sign of the 6 is negative. Sign of the 12 is negative. So when the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign. That'd be negative 18. Remember, don't let this confuse you. If you see negative 6 minus 12, what this really means is a negative 6 plus a negative 12. And again, when the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign. Now, rule 2. When the signs are different or opposite, one's positive, one's negative, simply subtract as normal. And by that, I mean subtract the large number minus the small. You're taking the small from the large. So subtract is normal, large minus small, and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. We know what absolute value is, and that's why it's so important here. So for example, 8 minus 6. The sign of the 8 is positive. The sign of the 6 is negative. When the signs are opposite, you subtract as normal and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So this would be positive, too, because there are more eight, more positives than negatives. The absolute value of 8 is 8. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. So the sign goes to the largest absolute value. So this is positive, too. I've got 19 minus 27. Remember, this is really a 19 plus a negative 27. So you're going to subtract as normal. 27 minus 19 is 8. And I'm going to keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So this would be negative 8 because I have more negatives than positives. Negative 11 plus 5, when the signs are opposite, I'm going to subtract as normal and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So since I have more negatives than positives, negative 11 plus 5 would be negative 6. 13 minus 30, the 13 is positive, And the 30 is negative. So when the signs are opposite, I subtract and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So 30, 13 minus 30, remember that's 13 plus a negative 30, and that's going to equal negative 17. Because 30 minus 13 is 17, I have more negatives than positives, 
So I keep the sign of the largest absolute value. E, negative 16 plus 10, the signs are opposite. So I'm going to subtract as normal and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. 16 minus 10 is 6, but I have more negatives than positives. So negative 6 would be my answer. Now, here's a special case. And the special case involves a negative being multiplied by another negative. When you're subtracting a negative number, the two negatives multiply together and become addition. So, for example, here in A, if I have negative 6 minus a negative 15, the sign of the 6 is negative. The sign of the 15 is negative. But I got this little negative guy here. So this is 16 minus a negative 15. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this negative times a negative becomes a positive. So now I have negative 16 plus negative 6 plus 15. Signs are opposite. When the signs are opposite, you subtract and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So 15 minus 6 is 9. There's more positives than negatives. 9 is my answer. 8 minus a negative 3 really is 8. Negative times a negative is a positive. 8 plus 3, which equals 11. Signs are the same. You add and keep the sign. I've got 12 minus a negative 9, so that's plus 9. Signs are the same, add and keep the sign. I got negative 7 minus a negative 7. So this is really negative 7 and minus a negative 7. That becomes plus 7. And when the signs are opposite, you subtract and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0 because zero minus, uh, 7 minus 7 is 0. And 0 does not have a sign. And last but not least, 14 minus a negative 4. I've got 14 minus a negative 4. So this is going to be 14 plus 4 because this negative and negative becomes a positive. Signs are the same. You add and keep the sign. Okay? And that's our special case. And that's how you add or subtract, add and or subtract, rather, integers. Okay. Now, there's a very useful property that uh, a lot of people just kind of brush over. And hopefully you could take it seriously because it's, it's a very powerful property. And it's something that we use all the time when we're solving equations or adding uh, integers. And it's really important to know. It's called the additive inverse property. And the additive inverse property states that for any non-zero number A, there is one real number, negative A, called the additive inverse or opposite of A, as described by the following. A, a positive A, plus a negative A equals A minus A, which equals zero. In other words, what's happening here is when you add a number plus its opposite, it's going to give you zero. Think about having $5 in your wallet and then giving $5 away. Five minus five is zero. So when you add a number and its opposite, this sum will be zero. How do you find additive inverses? Just change the sign. So the original number is 12 my additive inverse or opposite would be negative 12. Three-fifths, my additive inverse or opposite would be negative three-fifths. Two and three-eighths, my additive inverse or opposite would be negative 19-eighths. And just so you understand, let's say my original number was negative 12. My opposite would be positive 12. And whenever you add a number and its opposite, the answer is zero. They cancel each other out. Okay. Now, rules for integer operations continue. Let's learn now how to multiply and divide. The rules for multiplication and division are really easy, and they are the same exact rules. I promise. And here we go. A negative times a negative, sorry, is a positive. For example, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Right? Okay. I have a negative times a positive is a negative. 
So negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. Because a negative times a positive is a negative. And of course, a positive times a positive is a positive. So of course, positive 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. Same exact rules for division. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. For example, negative 10 divided by negative 2 is positive 5. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. For example, negative 10 divided by positive 2 is negative 5. And a positive divided by a positive is a positive. For example, 10 divided by positive 2 is positive 5. So a negative times a negative or a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Negative times a positive is a negative. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. Positive times a positive or positive divided by a positive is a positive. And now that we learned the multiplication rules, let's talk about the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal property. And it states here that for any non-zero number a, there is a real number 1 over a called the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal of a as described, sorry, that should not be an x, that should be an s, as described below. You have a times 1 over a equals 1 over a times a, which equals 1. Think about it. When I have this A, there's an invisible 1 down here. A over 1 times 1 over A, these guys cancel out, and I'm left with 1. So when I multiply a number times its reciprocal, my answer will be 1. However, little warning here. Little warning. Remember that the A in the denominator cannot be 0, because if there is a 0 in the denominator, the value is undefined. And it's the value, not the value. Okay, so when you multiply a number times its reciprocal, the answer will be 1. And that's the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal property. For example, if I have original number of 8, my multiplicative inverse or reciprocal will be 1 eighth. If I have a negative 3 fifths is my original number. My multiplicative inverse will be negative 5 thirds. I'm not changing the sign. I'm literally just flipping it. I'm finding the reciprocal. And 2 and 3 eighths, which is 19 eighths, will equal 8 over 19 as it's reciprocal. Because you take this guy and you just flip it, reciprocal. There is no such thing as a reciprocal for a mixed number. You must convert it into an improper fraction in order to turn it into a reciprocal. And that's the multiplicative property, or multiplicative inverse property. Thank you. So let's practice. 8 minus 12, you should get immediately, yes, hopefully you put negative 4. I got negative 12 minus a negative 5. Well, this is negative 12. A negative times a negative is a positive. Signs are opposite. I'm going to subtract and keep the sign of the largest absolute value, negative 7. I got negative 2 times 5. Negative times a positive is a negative, so that's negative 10. Negative 8 times negative 3, and negative times a negative is a positive. So that's 24, positive. And I just want to make sure, let's go back here. Negative times a positive is a negative. I want to make sure, I, think, I thought I said positive. Negative times a positive is a negative. That's why it's negative 10. Negative 20 divided by 5 is negative 4. Negative divided by positive is a negative. 48 divided by negative 16 is negative 3. Positive divided by negative is a negative. And there you have it, the integer operations. Thank you so very much. I hope you learned a lot, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.